Hello everyone. What's up? A very good morning to everyone present here. So, hi Raj. Hi Hardik. Hi Jatin. Hi Utkarsh. Good morning. Hi Somrik. How are you? A very good morning to you. So, hi Astitu. Hi Senthil. Good morning. Hi Sanskriti. Good morning. Hi Mohammed Asif. Hello everyone. Hi Saran. Good morning. So, how are you guys? Hope you all are fine and safe at home. And yes, working hard for your preparation regarding JE as well as NEET. So dear students, are you energetic? I hope that most of you got up early in the morning and just showing your presence over here in this particular live session. Yeah, uh, me too is also logged up at home. <laughs> so don't worry, we all are logged up at home. And yes, backup is saying, Josh is high. Okay. So my dear students, if someone uh, known to you has not joined the live session yet, just make them wake up, tap them on their shoulders and just say them that the session has started. So don't get late because two to three students, they get late. I don't know where are they. <laughs> okay. So my dear students, uh, in today's session, uh, you all uh, you all know that we are going to discuss the few important questions from the chapter Hydrogen. Well, I, again, I will say one thing that from this chapter also, J as well as NEED, they ask straight away questions. Okay. So in Hydrogen, uh, we also study about oxidizing agent and reducing agents also, a part of redox reaction. So need not to worry because in chemistry, each and every chapter has been mingled up. Fine. So my dear students, uh, before starting the live session, I see we are in the live session, but I mean to say that before going on to the first question, I just want to know how many of you attempted the mock test of yesterday's session and uh, how much you scored. So Ashwish Shikhari said, ma'am, I got 40 marks in the mock test. Really good. Senthil 30. Backup is saying 36. Krishna Prasad said he attempted but how much marks did you uh, score in your mock exam? Somrik 36, uh, Pawar Satnarayan uh, is saying I, he scored 35, Jatin 36, Brotati 20, what happened Brotati where you lagged? Utkarsh 32, uh, Veshi th Thunder is saying 50, is it so? Is it 50% or 50 marks? <laughs> Okay, yeah, Brodhiti, uh, I think you should now learn the concepts of the previous chapter, Metallurgy, have focus because straight away the questions come. Mr. Medicos is saying 38 marks, okay. Raj is saying 36. Good morning, Garima, yeah, you scored 40 marks. Okay, dear student, okay. So I believe that most of you have attempted the mock test and that's really very good because I hope that now you are knowing that what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses. Clear? Okay, dear students. No, Suraj, I'm asking the scores of yesterday's mock test. Fine? Okay. Garima, class is not yet started. I'm just uh, warming up the session first of all and uh, taking your attendance basically. So I'm just waiting for two to three students or more so that uh, they are not late for the class. So my dear students, I believe that you all are present now. And uh, yeah, if someone is late, uh, they'll join us uh, very soon. Okay. No, Chandru, you're not late. It's just the warming up session I'm doing here. So I welcome you over here for this class. And what are your scores, Chandru, for the yesterday's uh, mock exam? Hi Rajwardhan, what are your scores? Hi Suhail, I just want to know the scores of yours in the mock test. Okay, let us start Hardik. Now it's the time to begin this session and uh, be ready, ready, steady and go. And here's the first question of the session in front of you guys. The concentration of fluoride, lead, nitrate and iron in a water sample from an underground lake was found to be 1 ppm 
फोर्टी पी पी बी हंड्रेड पी पी एम एंड जीरो पॉइंट टू पी पी एम रिस्पेक्टिवली दिस वॉटर इज अनसुटेबल फॉर ड्रिंकिंग ड्यू टू हाई कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑफ सो सोमिक सेट बी इज द आंसर Rajwardhan is saying B is the answer. Backup is saying C is the answer. Ashwath Shikhar is saying C is the answer. Rajwardhan is saying B. Most of you are actually into the favor of B answer. Brotity has said C is the answer. Uh, yes, while teaching, I can see the chat box. Uh, okay, and uh, most of you are saying B. Some of you are saying C. Okay, so see, I give you sixty seconds, and you are in the mid of your timings. So, bugger guys, and let me know the right answer of the question. Shreya, what's your answer? Sanskriti, what your what's your answer? I just want to know the answers from you. Hardik Jain has said B is the answer. Suraj Sri Ganesh has said A is the answer. I'm getting all sorts of the answer. Okay, I'm getting all sorts of the answer. Fine. So time is up, my dear students. Shreya said, "C is the answer." Okay. So my dear students, I just want to tell want to tell you that the right answer is C, nitrate. Okay. So this water is unsuitable for drinking due to high concentration of nitrate. Okay. So before uh, telling me anything, I should tell you that what is the maximum permissible concentration of different chemicals in drinking water. okay so in drinking water in drinking water in drinking water maximum permissible concentration maximum per permissible concentration of different chemicals of different chemicals they are c for fluoride it should be 1 ppm okay if i talk about lead it should be 50 ppb clear if i talk about nitrate so the concentration of the nitrate in drinking water it should be 50 ppm okay if this particular concentration is been exceeding okay if it exceeds if it exceeds what will happen it will cause damage cause damage to digestive system to digestive system okay dear student fine so if i talk about iron concentration of iron should be 0.2 ppm okay if i take some other metals copper it should be 3 ppm clear if i talk about aluminum it should be 0.2 ppm if i talk about zinc it should be 5 ppm okay so according to the data which i have given you that this particular concentration should be there in drinking water okay if the concentration exceeds beyond these concentration the water would be unsuitable for drinking purposes so if i just see over here we can see that for nitrate they are giving 100 ppm and for nitrate it should be in the range of 0 to 50 ppm so correct option is c nitrate clear dear students yeah it is an important question because j asked such type of the question okay so you should be focused clear okay dear students and i believe that anuragesh tapsar and backup they are the first ones to give me the right answer clear dear students see each and every question discussed over here is an important question don't worry i won't be asking you such type of the questions which are not important somrit said that ma'am it's in environmental chemistry somrit this particular question belongs to environmental chemistry also chapter hydrogen also so don't worry this particular question belongs to both the chapters 
hydrogen as well as environmental chemistry i was i already uh, told you that the chapters are mingled over here over here you will get some such questions also which are of redox reaction but they are the part of hydrogen that too clear dear students okay dear students so i am now moving on to the next question and here's the next question on the screen so my dear students i believe uh, that uh, you have to actually attempt the mock test of this chapter and the link of the mock test has been given in the description box fine don't forget to attempt the mock test because i'm getting the replies from some of the students regarding their mock exam i just want all the students should be uh, uh, attempting the mock test okay so yeah hydrogen peroxide acts both as a oxidizing and as a reducing agent depending upon the nature of the reacting species in which of the following cases h2o2 act as a reducing agent in acidic medium okay so utkarsh said b ram babu said d somrik said a garima said a okay parth has said c jatin has said a shreyasi basu has said c vignesh ramkrishna has said a mani deep has said a uh, saurav shrivastava has said d okay so i'm getting all sorts of the answer a d c okay so you are actually marking uh, three options a d and c but i want the right answer time up time is up guys so it's my turn to solve it for you most of you have actually favored the answer in the favor of option number a clear dear students so yes option number a is the right answer clear dear students so here is my turn to solve it for you see you all know that hydrogen peroxide h2o2 it act as both as a reducing agent as well as a oxidizing agent okay so h2o2 it act as a reducing agent as well as oxidizing agent depending upon the medium things okay now over here they are saying that hydrogen peroxide act as a oxidizing and as a reducing agent depending upon the nature of the reacting species in which of the following cases h2o2 act as a reducing agent in acidic medium i will go with option number a and the reaction pertaining to this particular equation would be kmno4 okay plus h2o2 plus h2so4 it gives us k2so4 plus 5o2 plus twice of mnso4 plus 8h2o see i'll now balance it out so if i am balancing over here i'd put 2 over here i'll put 5 over here 3 clear and the equation has now been balanced now my dear students Uh, in which case h2o2 act as a reducing agent reducing agent means which reduces the other species and itself get oxidized so if h2o2 is getting oxidized what will happen see over here in the reactant side if i talk about the oxidation state of oxygen it is minus 1 you all know in peroxide the oxidation state of oxygen is minus 1 clear now if i talk about product side the oxidation state of oxygen is zero okay so if it is behaving as a reducing agent it itself will get oxidized so over here the oxidation state of oxygen in h2o2 is actually changing into zero oxidation state that means loss of electron and it has been oxidized clear so mno4 would be the right answer you can also write the another equation like this also that choice of mn o4 negative plus 5 h2o2 plus 6 h positive clear it gives us 5 o2 plus twice of mn2 positive plus 8 h2o clear over here you can see 
that this manganese in reactant side it is in plus 7 oxidation state whereas over here in product side it is in plus 2 oxidation state so it has been reduced so h2o2 it is a reducing agent which reduces manganese in plus 7 oxidation state to manganese in plus 2 oxidation state and it itself get oxidized from minus 1 oxidation state to zero oxidation state so option number a is the right answer clear dear students I believe that most of you have given the right answer. Rajwardhan, yes, you have given the right answer. Uh, but Anuragesh, Tapsar and Jatin, these are the first ones to give me the correct answer. Keep it up guys, really good, keep it up. So my dear students, this particular chapter is really important, I should say, easy also, I should say, and a chapter from where the direct questions are asked, okay? A common sense questions are asked. So you have to actually be alert for this particular type of the chapter clear dear students so my dear students i just want to say one thing that until and unless you will not attempt the mock test you will not able to know what are your strengths and weaknesses and for this particular thing the link of the mock test for this chapter has been given in the description box and yes if you like the session hit the like button subscribe the channel and share it with your friends as much as you can so my dear students, shall I move on to the next question now? Shall I move on to the next question now? Just say me, yes ma'am, we are ready for the next question. Come on guys, be energetic, you are young guys. So say yes ma'am, okay dear students, here goes the next question on the screen for all of you. Which of the following statements is true? I believe I'll get the right answer for this particular question. Just let me know the right answer of this particular question. Which of the following statements is true? Let me know the answer of this particular question. Raj has said B. Anuragesh has said C. Sumati has said A. Somrik has said C. Sanskriti has said C. Okay, Hima Bindu, I think you are new. So welcome girl and you have said B as the answer. Hardik has said B. I am getting all sorts of the answer. A answer also, B also, C also. Can somebody say D also? So that I will have multiple answers with me. Okay. So yes, I am just waiting. Just my dear students, again read the question. Again read the question and let me know the answer. Garima has said C is the answer. Rajwardhan has said C is the answer. Jatin has said C is the answer. Jayakumari has said C is the answer. Chandru, you are saying B is the answer. Okay, Sumati has said C. Brachati has said C. Okay, time is up my dear students and here is the solution for you. But before that I want to say that Anuragesh, Sanskriti and Prabhudatta you are the first ones to give me the correct answer of this particular question and the option number C is the right answer. How? Let's discuss one by one. If I talk about statement number A, HF is less polar than HBr. See it is a wrong statement because HF is more polar. HF is more polar than HBr. And yes, one more, uh, I, one, more, one more thing I want to say that if somebody is not able to see the questions nicely, let me know. I will just zoom it and show it to you. Okay, dear students. So, if I talk about the first statement, HF is less polar than HBr. It is a wrong statement. The correct would be that HF is more polar than HBr. How? See, when we move down the group, what actually happens is, can you tell me? See, I want to clear one thing that the electronegativity of fluorine is higher than bromine. So when we move down the group, electronegativity decreases. So if I talk about the electronegativity thing, so electronegativity of fluorine is greater than of bromine. And because of this particular reason, charge, charge created, charge created due to charge created due to dipole moment charge created due to dipole moment on hydrogen charge created due to dipole moment on hydrogen atom on hydrogen atom by fluorine 
चार्ज क्रिएटेड ड्यू टू डायपोल मूवमेंट ऑन हाइड्रोजन आइटम बाय फ्लोरिन इज हायर इज हायर देन ब्रोमीन मेकिंग इट मोर पोलर मेकिंग इट मोर पोलर क्लियर मोर ओवर पोलैरिटी ऑफ द कंपाउंड डिपेंड्स ऑन इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिविटी डिफरेंस बिटवीन द एटम सो मोर इज द इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिविटी डिफरेंस मोर इज द पोलैरिटी सो इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिविटी डिफरेंस इफ आई टॉक अबाउट इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिविटी डिफरेंस वेट अ मिनट इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिविटी डिफरेंस बिटवीन एच एफ एंड एच बी आर सो इलेक्ट्रो नेगेटिविटी डिफरेंस बिटवीन एच एंड एफ इज मोर in comparison to electronegative difference between h and br therefore the polarity of hf is more than that of hbr if i talk about statement number b listen it very carefully absolutely pure water does not contains any ions this statement is a wrong statement because even pure water has an amphiprotic nature pure water is having amphi pure water has एम्फीप्रोटिक एम्फी प्रोटिक नेचर प्योर वॉटर हैज एम्फी प्रोटिक नेचर वॉट इज एम्फी प्रोटिक नेचर मीन्स दट द स्पीशी दैट हैज द पोटेंशियल टू एक्ट एज बोथ एसिड एंड बेस ओके सो दिस मीन्स दैट अ स्मॉल अमाउंट ऑफ आयंस विल फॉर्म इन प्योर वॉटर सो सम मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ एच टू ओ सम मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ एच टू ओ दे विल एक्ट एज एसिड्स and if they act as acid they will actually donate h positive they will donate h positive and will be converted into oh negative ions okay and some molecules of water okay they act as what they act as a base by accepting the h positive ion clear so the proton donating molecule will become oh negative ion while proton accepting proton accepting water molecule they will become h3o positive ion clear dear students so pure water do contains ion so statement number b is wrong talking about c chemical bond formation takes place when forces of attraction overcome the forces of repulsion absolutely right so when forces of attraction are more than the forces of repulsion chemical bond formation will take place if i talk about b statement in covalency transference of electrons takes place my dear students in covalency sharing of electrons takes place in covalency sharing of electron takes place so d is wrong b is wrong a is wrong only statement number c is right okay dear student so option number c is right clear dear students okay so my dear students shall i move on to the next question now so my dear students i just want to know shall i move on to the next question now have you understood this particular question nicely in a nice manner is there any doubt regarding this particular question okay dear students here goes the next question on the screen for all of you question is concentrated hydrochloric acid when kept in an open air sometimes produces a cloud of white fumes the explanation for it is that i want the right answers from all of you worshest what happened in the initial uh, uh, time of the session only you are asking how many questions today ma'am have you got bored see there are questions don't worry i'll let you know some of the important questions of this particular chapter jay kumari brotty raj verma ashwit shekhar uh, you all have said that d is the right answer d is the right answer but somebody has shreya singh sees the answer okay shreya si basu has said d ram babu adi is saying c is the answer i am getting all sorts of the answer b as an answer c as an answer d also as an answer but what is the right answer let me know about it i want the right answers from all of you so time is up my dear students for this particular question 
and before uh, telling you the solution i want to tell you that saurabh garima and shreya are the first ones to give me the correct answer that means option number c is the right option for this particular question see concentrated hydrochloric acid when kept in open air sometimes produces a cloud of white fumes the explanation for it is that see listen it very very carefully that hcl gas in presence of moisture in air hcl gas in presence hcl gas in presence of moisture in air forms droplets from droplets of liquid solution from droplets of liquid solution in the form of in the form of cloudy smoke in the form of cloudy smoke okay that means concentrated hcl produces wafers of hcl and hcl has a strong affinity for moisture this hcl it is having the strong affinity for moisture it results in the formation of droplets of liquid solution which appears like a cloudy smoke so strong affinity of hcl gas for moisture in air results in the formation of droplets of liquid solution which appears like a cloudy smoke is the right explanation concentrated hydrochloric acid emits strong smelling hcl gas all the time no this is not the explanation oxygen is air reacts with the emitted hcl gas to form a cloud of fluorine gas no again not the correct explanation due to strong affinity for water over here we are talking yeah concentrated hydrochloric acid pulls the moisture of air towards itself this moisture form droplets of water and hence the cloud so this is also not the correct explanation c is the correct explanation for this particular type of the question okay dear students so my dear students what are you up to how is the josh how is the josh my dear students how is the energy among you i believe i believe that you all are energetic yes back up is saying hi ma'am garima is saying hi ma'am yes see my dear students the josh should be always high utkarsh is saying average average is the josh okay is it so utkarsh so my dear students bug up and yes i just want to say that if you like the session hit the like button subscribe the channel and share it with your friends so my dear students here's the next question on the screen for all of you guys hydrogen peroxide oxidizes fecn64 negative to fecn63 negative in acidic medium but reduces fecn63 negative to fecn64 negative in alkaline medium the other products formed are respectively uh, garima has said d is the answer anuragesh has said d parth is saying b raj verma has said d prabhudatta is saying c deepa joshi is saying d sai shekhar reddy is saying d ashish shekhar is saying d sanskriti has said d so most of you have opted the answer in the favor of option number d hardik is also saying d sumati d okay my dear student time is up and yes d is the right answer well anuragesh garima and yeah raj okay so anuragesh garima and raj are the first ones to give me the correct answer that option number d is the right answer so let's know what's the solution see h2o2 H2O2 when it actually reacts with FeCN64 negative clear so hydrogen peroxide it oxidizes FeCN64 negative to FeCN63 negative and along with it there is production of water over here okay okay dear students so over here what has happened that oxygen is in minus 1 oxidation state over here iron is in plus 2 oxidation state this side if i see oxygen is in minus 2 oxidation state clear and fe is in plus 3 oxidation state so when we are moving from plus 2 to plus 
that means oxidation has taken place oxidation has taken place and when we move from minus 1 to minus 2 it means reduction has taken place so over here h2o2 is behaving as a oxidizing agent now if i talk about the another thing that h2o2 clear it is in acidic medium if i talk about that h2o2 it actually converts fe cn6 3 negative to fe cn6 4 negative in alkaline medium so there would be production of oxygen gas plus h2o along with it remember it okay so what has happened over here minus 1 plus 3 over here plus 2 and 0 so minus 1 to 0 and plus 3 to plus 2 so over here what has happened over here oxidation has taken place and when f in plus 3 is going to f in plus 2 that means reduction has taken place reduction has taken place clear dear students so option number d is the right answer you can see the other products when i'm talking about the acidic medium it is h2o and when i'm talking about alkaline medium it is o2 and h2o so option number d is the right answer and most of you marked it correct clear dear students okay thank you so much astat thank you so much so my dear students have you got the answer have you got the answer okay so shall i move on to the next question now but yes my dear students do not forget to attempt the mock test and the link of the mock test is given in the description box well if you like this session hit the like button share it with your friends and, and what what subscribe the channel okay so my dear students without delaying much moving on to the next question and here's the next question in front of you the total number of isotopes of hydrogen and number of radioactive isotopes among them respectively are it's a very simple question rahul is saying when mock test rahul just after the session gets over what you will see there is a link given below in the description box so click on that link and go to the mock test to attempt for this particular chapter chapter hydrogen so most of you are saying the answer of this particular question is a but shankar has said answer is c shankar kai tukka to nahi maar diya tumne okay kabhi randomly to answer nahi kar diya shankar because all of my students are actually in favor of option number a and yes my dear students option number a is right well anuragesh Krishna Prasad and Somrik, you are the first ones to give me the correct answer. Yes, option number A is right. It's a very simple question, dear students. C. Total number of isotopes. Total number of isotopes of hydrogen. You all know that there are three isotopes of hydrogen. H11, comma, H12 or you can say or you can say it as d12 or you can okay so this is the second isotope if i talk about third isotope it is h13 or you can say t13 so hydrogen then deuterium and then tritium okay so these are the three isotopes and the radioactive isotope among these three it is H13 only. So this is the radioactive element. Radioactive element. It was very simple and easy question but was asked by J. Clear dear students. So option number A is the right option. Most of you have given the right option. Okay. <clears throat> what is my name? My name is Rakhi Maheshwari and I am your chemistry teacher taking the live session. Okay Tanmay, I believe now it's okay for you. Now my dear students, uh, so shall we move on to the next question? Rajati, it is not Rekha, it is Rakhi. <coughs> so shall I move on to the next question now? 
Yes. How is the Josh, dear students? मैम समझ में नहीं आया यशवंत पटेल इज सेंग यशवंत इसमें समझने वाली कोई बात ही नहीं है क्वेश्चन ने पूछा है टोटल नंबर ऑफ आइसोटोप्स तो हाइड्रोजन के तीन आइसोटोप्स होते हैं H11, H12 एंड H13. H12 को हम ड्यूटेरियम भी कहते हैं एंड H13 को हम ट्रीटियम भी कहते हैं इनमें से जो रेडियो एक्टिव एलिमेंट है वो ट्रीटियम है एंड इट इज दैक्ट ओके सो ऑल ऑफ माई स्टूडेंट्स आर सेम Hi is the Josh. Hi is the Josh. Yes, my dear students, baga baga and yes, I do believe that you all are gonna crack J and NEET exam. Okay, dear students. So, my dear students, here's the next question on the screen to you. Question is among the following reaction of hydrogen. With halogens, the one that requires a catalyst. A very easy question. Among the following reactions of hydrogen with halogens, the one that requires a catalyst is. So I think that most of you will give me the right answer. And yes, I'm getting the answers as C, B, D, C, B, D. Okay, somebody saying C, somebody saying B, somebody saying D. so uh, the reaction which requires a catalyst time is up my dear students and yes i will go with option number c as the right answer so option number c is the right answer well garima prabhudatta and parth you are the first ones to give me the right answer clear dear students so my dear students see if i just talk about the reaction between H two plus I two, I will get twice of H I. Okay, now this particular reaction is carried out in the presence of catalyst, and that catalyst is platinum catalyst. Okay, platinum catalyst. Okay, why so? See, among all the halogens, iodine is least reactive. Among all the halogens. iodine is the least reactive halogen so when we move when we move from fluorine to iodine okay down in a group reactivity decreases reactivity decreases reactivity decreases so when reactivity is decreasing obviously we will require a catalyst to enhance the rate of reaction and so we require catalyst when there is a reaction between h2 plus i2 to form twice of h i it was a very simple explanation and i hope that most of you have given me the right answer okay clear dear students so my dear students i believe uh, there was nothing to understand for this particular question it was a very simple question so without delaying much i am now moving on to the next question and here is the next question on the screen for you guys the chemical nature of hydrogen peroxide is option number a is oxidizing agent in acidic medium but not in basic medium reducing agent in basic medium but not in acidic medium oxidizing and reducing agent in acidic medium but not in basic medium option number 4th is saying that oxidizing and reducing agent in both acidic and basic medium so i'm getting most of your answers correct option number d is the right answer very good keep it up great my dear students great option number d is the right answer well garima anuj uh, well garima anuragesh ashrit shikhar you are the first three ones to give me the right answer of this particular question keep it up guys Anuragesh I really appreciate you because this time in today's session you have given me the right answer and you are the first one to give the right answer for most of the questions so keep it up Anuragesh good good going now if i discuss about this particular question i would just say if i talk about oxidizing agent okay if i talk about oxidizing agent with respect to h2o2 only okay so what i have said that h2o2 it is a chemical uh, and its nature is that it behaves as a oxidizing agent as well as reducing agent in both the acidic medium and basic medium how come there are some equations by which uh, you can understand it very well so see h2 o2 plus 
twice of H positive means it is an acidic medium plus twice of electron and it is actually giving me twice of H2O. This is acidic medium. This is acidic medium. Clear dear students? Okay, if I talk about basic medium H2O2 plus two electrons and it's gi giving me twice of OH negative and it is basic medium. Clear dear students? So over here what you are seeing that over here the oxidation state of oxygen is minus 1 and over here in product side it is minus 2. Similarly over here it is minus 1 and in the product side it is minus 2. So you can see that H2O2 is behaving as the oxidizing agent in acidic medium also and in basic medium also clear. Now if I talk about reducing agent, if I talk about reducing agent. So what shall I say about reducing agent? I just want to say again one thing. See, listen it very carefully. That H2O2, okay, it is actually giving me twice of H positive plus O2 plus 2 electrons. This is acidic medium. This is acidic medium. Okay, if I talk about basic medium H2O2 plus twice of OH negative, it is actually giving me twice of H2O plus O2 plus 2 electron. And this is what is basic medium. Clear dear students? Okay. So over here what is happening? Just have a look. Oxygen is in minus 1 state and over here oxygen is in 0 oxidation state. Over here oxygen is in minus 1 state in H2O2 and whereas over it is in 0. So you can see that H2O2 behaves as a reducing agent in acidic medium also and in basic medium also. H2O2 it behaves as an oxidizing agent in acidic medium also and in basic medium also. So option number D is the right option for this particular question. Clear dear students? Okay. I hope that you have understood it very very nicely. I believe now there won't be any problem for this particular kind of the question. Clear dear students? Okay, dear students, my dear students, I am really very happy that uh, this time for this session, you are actually giving me the right answer. Ramesh is saying how to memorize chemical equations by practicing it again and again in your rough notebooks. So do it and you will actually get to know each and everything. Fine. But yes, do not ratify it. Just see what actually is happening and then learn it. Clear, dear students? Okay, no, so I believe that uh, I do have a faith and I believe also that you all will be attempting the mock test just after the session gets over. And yes, if you like the session, hit the like button, subscribe the channel and share it with your friends. So my dear students, I'm now moving on to the next question. Three, two, one and go. The next question on the screen for all of you. Identify the reaction which does not liberate hydrogen. Identify the reaction which does not liberate hydrogen. Reaction of zinc with aqueous alkali. Electrolysis of acidified water using platinum electrodes. Allowing a solution of sodium in liquid ammonia to stand. Reaction of lithium hydride with B2H6. Well, what is the answer? Let me know the answer of this particular question. I'm just waiting for your answer. Sai Shekhar Reddy has said D is the answer. Sai Shekhar Reddy is saying D is the answer. Sanskriti said D. Muhammad Asif Reza is saying D. Okay, Saurav Srivastava, I don't know where you have gone. Shreya is saying C. Venugopal is saying C. Ashwit Sharma is saying C. Sombrik is saying C. Uh, Sai Shekhar Reddy is saying D. So my dear students, now the time is up and uh, uh, I just want to know who has given the right answer. So Sai, Chandrish Reddy and Anuragesh, you are the first ones to give me the correct answer. Option number D is the right answer, dear students. Option number D is the right answer. So let's uh, move one by one. Talking about the statement number A, reaction of zinc with aqueous alkali. So reaction of zinc with aqueous alkali. So it is my zinc reaction with Suppose if I am doing the reaction with NaOH, so I will get sodium zincate Na2ZnO2 plus H2. Clear? So it is sodium zincate. Sodium zincate. Clear? 
if I balance it, it is coming like this. So for in option number A, we are actually getting the hydrogen gas liberated out. If I talk about statement number B, electrolysis of acidified water using platinum electrodes. So during the electrolysis of water, you all know what actually happens. Electrolysis of water. So what happens during electrolysis of water? I believe you all know that at cathode, there is generation of hydrogen gas. H positive plus electron, it will give me half H2, okay? Whereas at anode, if I talk about, at anode, what happens? That hydroxide ion is oxidized. Hydroxide ion is oxidized to oxygen, to oxygen. Remember this particular thing. And the reaction would be, twice of OH negative giving us O plus H2O plus two electrons clear now twice of O gives us O2 clear so at anode there would be liberation of oxygen but at cathode liberation of hydrogen so this will not be the answer if I talk about allowing a solution of sodium in liquid ammonia to stand so if I go the uh, if I go with this particular reaction I'll just write twice of Na plus twice of ammonia, it gives me sodamide twice of Na, NH2 plus liberation of hydrogen gas. Over here, we require iron as a catalyst to help the reaction to proceed. Well, if I talk about option number D, reaction of lithium hydride with B2H6. So just have a look that twice of LiH plus B2H6 it gives us twice of Li BH4, BH4. It is a complex which has formed and in this particular reaction, there is no liberation of hydrogen gas and this is what the question is asking. So option number D is the right answer. Option number D is the right answer. Clear dear students? Okay dear students? Okay, so my dear students, are you still energetic still your josh is high or not just let me know just interact with me okay dear students yes venu venu gopal is saying yes ma'am high is the josh it should be each and every time high so that your your energy is on the right track okay somrik is saying theek thak hai josh why somrik what happened are you not getting the right answers today Okay, can't you see my answer ma'am? No Jatin, I do see your answer. But the chat is going on so fast that I, <laughs> I just can just think. Uh, I just can read some of the answers only. So don't worry Jatin, you are also, I'm, I, I do also see your uh, answers. So don't need, need not to worry about it. Clear Jatin? So my dear students, now is the time to move on to the next question. But before that, what should I say to you? Do not forget to attempt the mock test and the link of the mock test is given in the description box. Some of the students have joined me new so I welcome you all the students like Tayon Shang. These are the new students. Goldie. So I just request you uh, students that do attempt the mock test and the link of the mock test is given in the description box. Okay dear students. Mohammed Asif has said, ma'am, electrolysis again. Mohammed, I would just say that you should read this particular concept. This concept you have studied for the first time in your 10th class and now in your this particular class. Okay. So, my dear student, just read the concept that you will get to know what actually is electrolysis of water, what happens during the electrolysis because it's a very big process. So, I cannot explain over here. So, Jatin is saying next question, next question. So, yes, my dear students, if you like the session, hit the like button, share it with your friends and subscribe the channel. Here goes the next question on the screen for all of you. A very easy and a simple question. Most of you will give me the right answer of this question. Which physical property of dihydrogen is wrong? I just want the first answer. Garima has said D. Garima, you are the first one to give me the answer. Then Krishna Prasad, then Gold. Then, then go, uh, Garima has said me the first as a right answer. Then Krishna Prasad. Then Deepa Joshi. So you are the three 
first three wants to give me the right answer and the right answer is no doubt undoubtedly the right answer is d that see if i talk about dihydrogen it is a colorless gas it is a odorless gas it is a tasteless gas it is inflammable gas we cannot say that dihydrogen is non inflammable so the wrong property is d hydrogen is highly inflammable and in on contact with air when hydrogen comes in contact with air it causes it causes an explosion so so d is the right answer somrik you said ma'am i was the first no somrik you were not the first garima was first garima was first to give me the answer just speed up guys speed up it was a very simple question you might have studied in your 10th class 9th class it's a very common question okay dear students so my dear students without delaying much moving on to the next question and here's the next question on the screen for all of you identify the incorrect statement regarding heavy water identify the incorrect statement regarding heavy water so chandru is saying d tapsar has said d garima has said b garima is saying b is the answer anuragesh b sankarsha is saying b shri yadav is saying b parth is saying b brotati is saying b jatin where is your answer jatin is saying d venugopal has said d sankarsha b रूपम मंडल बी पार्ट बी तरुण यू हैव सेड सी इज द आंसर विकास कुमार सिंह बी ओके ओके टाइम इज अप टाइम इज अप नाउ सो इट्स माय टर्न सी माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स इफ यू रिएक्ट व्हाट शुड आई से लेट्स मूव ऑन टू दी स्टेटमेंट नंबर वन इफ आई टॉक अबाउट दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टेटमेंट it reacts with al4c3 to produce cd4 and alod3 we have to identify the incorrect statement heavy water means d2o clear so when d2o it reacts with al4c3 obviously there would be the production of cd4 plus alod3 just compare this d2o with h2o reaction h2o plus al4c3 it actually formed methane gas plus aluminium hydroxide so similarly we have to do with d2o remember this particular thing so you have to remember this particular thing clear dear students mm -hmm. okay okay talking about b statement so what should i say a statement is the right statement but it is not the correct answer of this particular question if i go for option number b it is used as a coolant in nuclear reactor student heavy water is used as a moderator heavy water is used heavy water is used as a moderator heavy water is used as a moderator in nuclear reactors why to slow down the fast moving neutrons to slow down to slow down the fast moving to slow down the fast moving neutrons to slow down the fast moving neutrons and helps in controlling the nuclear fission process and helps in controlling helps in controlling the nuclear the nuclear fission process and helps in controlling the nuclear fission process okay so option number b is the right statement that means it is the incorrect statement regarding heavy water whereas if i talk about it reacts with cac2 plus uh, cac2 to produce c2c2d2 and caod2 it is the right statement so suppose i am taking d2o and react this d2o with cac2 obviously there would be the formation of c2d2 plus caod twice just compare it with h2o so when h2o reacts with cac2 it forms c2h2 okay ethyne 
plus calcium hydroxide clear so just have a focus over here and just compare it okay similarly i was talking about this fine clear dear students yeah it reacts with so3 to form deuterated sulfuric acid it is also the right statement so the incorrect statement is the b statement incorrect statement is the b, b statement clear dear students yes brotty it was an easy question but most of you have not given me the right answer so someone uh, someone was having some doubts so i have cleared all the doubts over here clear dear students so shall i move on to the next question yes venugopal hi is the josh josh is hi yes the josh should be hi always josh should be hi always clear dear students so here goes the next question but yes if you like the session hit the like button share it with your friends and subscribe the channel and yes do not forget to attempt the mock test so here is the next question on the screen in which of the following reactions hydrogen peroxide act as an oxidizing agent again an easy question very easy question very easy question what is the answer what is the answer i just want to know akshay kumar has said b prabhudatta is saying c um k sasi kala is saying b krishna prasad is saying b okay okay raj verma has said b dear anuragesh has said d anuragesh has said d uh, all are saying b so my dear students uh, garima and anuragesh you are the two ones the first two ones to give me the right answer that option number d is right varshist has has also said d is the answer so my dear students ek bar question ko dekho to sahi question ko solve to karo tabhi answer milega aise hi tukke baaje se answer nahi milne wala hai aap apne exam mein random answers nahi de sakte hain negative marking hogi isme सो so आंसर को ध्यान से बताइए डी है राइट आंसर डी यहां मैंने पूछा है हाइड्रोजन परऑक्साइड एक्ट एज एन ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एजेंट ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एजेंट का क्या मतलब होता है ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एजेंट का मतलब होता है जो दूसरों को ऑक्सीडाइज करे और खुद रिड्यूज हो जाए रिडक्शन का मतलब क्या होता है गेनिंग ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स रिडक्शन का मतलब क्या होता है गेन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स ठीक है सो ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एजेंट मतलब दूसरों को ऑक्सीडाइज करे खुद को रिड्यूस करे रिडक्शन का मतलब गेन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन्स एक 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 रिएक्शन को लेकर देखते हैं इट वुड बी इजी फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू देन टू अंडरस्टैंड इट अगर मैं यहां देखती हूं एच ओ सी एल प्लस एच टू ओ टू एच सी ओ पॉजिटिव प्लस सी एल नेगेटिव प्लस ओ टू यहां पर देखिए एच टू ओ टू के एच टू ओ टू में देखिए ऑक्सीजन का ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट माइनस वन है पर ऑक्साइड में एच टू ओ टू का ऑक्सी पर ऑक्साइड एच टू ओ टू के अंदर ऑक्सीजन का ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट सभी को पता है माइनस वन है प्रोडक्ट साइड में देखिए ऑक्सीजन का ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट जीरो है तो यहां पर क्या हुआ लॉस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन हुआ दैट मींस एच टू ओ टू का यहां पर क्या हुआ एच टू ओ टू का यहां पर क्या हुआ ऑक्सीडेशन हुआ हमें रिडक्शन चाहिए ये गलत है दिस इज रॉन्ग टॉकिंग अबाउट बी यहां पर भी देखिए एच पे माइनस वन एंड यहां ऑक्सीजन पे जीरो अगेन ऑक्सीडेशन हो रहा है एच टू ओ टू का अगेन अगेन ऑक्सीडेशन हो रहा है एच टू ओ टू का क्लियर डियर स्टूडेंट्स सो इन ए ऑप्शन आल्सो एंड इन बी ऑप्शन आल्सो वी हैव सीन दैट द ऑक्सीडेशन ऑफ एच टू ओ टू इज टेकिंग प्लेस आई हैव जस्ट शोन यू बाय द ऑक्सीडेशन स्टेट इफ आई टॉक अबाउट सी स्टेटमेंट हेयर ऑल्सो यू कैन सी that we have minus 1 oxidation state of oxygen in h2o2 whereas in the product we are having zero oxidation state of oxygen again oxidation of h2o2 is taking place so b is wrong c is wrong but in d option you can see that in h2o2 over here we are having minus 1 oxidation state whereas in h2o we are having minus 2 oxidation state so the oxidation state of oxygen in h2o2 in reactant site it is minus 1 whereas the oxidation state of oxygen in h2o it is minus 2 so over here what is happening gain of electrons over here gain of electrons is taking place that means oh, 
over here H2O2 is behaving as an oxidizing agent which oxidizes PBS to PBSO4 and itself get reduced to H2O. So option number D is the right answer. Option number D is the right answer. Option number D is the right answer. Sakhet is saying ma'am we need a clarity regarding coolant in the last question ma'am please. I would say just read the NCERT book for this particular question. Your each and every doubt would be clarified there itself only. So uh, to clarify it read the NCERT book. It is given that heavy water is used as a moderator in nuclear reactor. It slows down the fast moving uh, neutrons and it helps in controlling the nuclear fission process. I hope there would be no doubt if you read the NCERT process. Clear? Okay. Clear dear students? Okay. So my dear students now I am moving on to the next question. I am moving on to the next question. Surekha you have said ma'am English please. Surekha most of my session is in English language only but sometimes I do because these sessions are bilingual sessions. I have to speak both in English as well as in Hindi but 95% of the time I speak in English only. So need not to worry about it. Clear? Now without wasting your time my dear students do not forget to attempt the mock test after the session gets over. It will boost up your preparation and the link of the mock test is given in the description box. So here goes the next question on the screen for all of you guys. Again a very easy question. I believe that you will solve it. In a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, combustion of hydrogen occurs. In a hydrogen oxygen fuel cell, combustion of hydrogen occurs to generate heat, create potential difference between the two electrodes, produce high purity of water, produce high purity of water, remove remove adsorbed oxygen remove ad adsorbed oxygen from electrode surface so i want the answer from you sanskriti said b saurabh shrivastav said b uh, sanskriti said c so anuragesh uh, you have said b and i believe you are the first one to say me the right answer well the second one who is giving the right answer is varshisht ganeshwara Okay, so yes, my dear student, B is the right answer. Listen it very, very carefully. Time is up and B is the right answer of this particular question. See students in the fuel cell, the combustion of hydrogen occurs to generate the electricity. Okay, combustion of hydrogen. Combustion of hydrogen. Combustion of hydrogen occurs to generate occurs to generate electricity occurs to generate electricity and this is achieved this is achieved by creating this is achieved by creating a potential difference this is achieved by creating a potential difference potential difference this is achieved by creating a potential difference between the electrodes between the electrodes clear so any cell if i talk about any cell and here i am talking about fuel cell so any cell such as fuel cell it works it works when a potential difference is developed when a potential difference is developed is developed clear dear students hope this point is clear and option number b is the right option okay my dear students now the next question would be the last question of this particular what session so this question would be the last question of the session but before that i will today specially mention anuragesh for demonstration of great accuracy and speed although almost of the students like garima sanskriti shreya parth jatin saurabh somrik were highly energetic and mostly answers given by you were correct so that's really great students keep up the good work and yes before moving on to the next question one more announcement that tomorrow we shall be discussing some very important questions 
from s block elements so be prepared for tomorrow's class so here goes the next question and yes do not forget to attempt the mock test the link of the mock test is given in the description box clear and if you like the session hit the like button share it with your friends subscribe the channel clear dear students so here goes the last question of the session in front of you in context with the industrial preparation of hydrogen from water from water gas co plus h2 which of the following is the correct statement in context with the industrial preparation of hydrogen from water gas which of the following is the correct statement tapsar has said tapsar has said a is the answer no i am not angry today i am really not angry today uh, i i have always been i am always been in a very good mood so need not to worry kartike is saying ma'am i think you are very angry today no no kartike it's not like that i am a very cool girl i am a very cool teacher so did not to worry about it okay so i uh, this is my voice it might uh, have actually thought of that i am in an anger but no not at all i am really happy that you all are actually being with me you all are energetic in this lockdown period you all are safe you all are working hard and this is the thing which keeps me motivating and this is because i come daily sharply at 11 am okay dear students so yes most of you have given me the right answer and option number a is the right answer well tap tap sir sumati shrisha are the first one to give me the correct answer of this particular question okay come on this was the last question of the session so we will be meeting soon tomorrow sharply at 11 am in the morning so do not to worry about it so if i uh, uh, just uh, explain you option number a that uh, co is oxidized to co2 with steam in the presence of the catalyst followed by absorption of co2 in the alkali it's a very correct statement and if i talk about b c and d that co and h2 are fractionally separated using differences in their densities no it's not the right statement co is removed by absorption in aqueous co2 cl2 no h2 is removed through occultion with palladium no if i go with option number a i would write the equation co plus h2 plus h2o it gives me co2 plus twice of h2 clear dear students uh it is then been followed by the absorption of co2 in alkali so naoh i am taking the alkali and there is formation of na2co3 plus h2o okay so option number a is the right answer yes sumati you answered it rightly so my dear students uh, this was uh, the end of the session today's session and i believe that you all have enjoyed learning from this particular session i believe the sessions which i am coming up with they are very much beneficial for all of you they are helping you out and they are keeping you motivated in this lockdown period because it's the time you need to work hard you have got ample amount of time to prepare for your je as well as neat exam clear dear students so i should say that just be safe at your home work hard enjoy the day enjoy your studies and yes bye bye take care we'll meet you tomorrow sharply at 11 am and tomorrow's topic would be the discussion of the important questions of s block elements ya yeah, hima you have to crack the exam so bye bye take care goodbye bye bye